Hello everybody, um, I realize I haven't done any videos in a long time. Uh, I will be having a DVD Blu-ray update very soon. Uh, <clears throat> it's just, I figured I'd do a review, because I haven't done one on here in a while. I've mainly done other things, like trying to sell either DVDs or Blu-rays or whatever, um, which I'm doing really good, really good on eBay with that right now. But, nonetheless, despite a lot of stuff, uh, the movie I have to review today, it's one I, I just gotta do it. I do a review for it. I, I'm also going to be doing a review from a website's more written review, but I also want to talk about the movie on here. And it's mainly because you watch the trailer, and well, I watched the trailer, and I was I got really hyped about it because of the type of like the way the film was was uh, was shot and everything else like that. So I was like, oh, this is gonna be cool, you know. And then I actually watched the movie. And yeah, it was a little bit, well, quite different than what I thought it would actually become. Uh, and that movie is The Silent House. I'm not sure if this is out, it's probably, this is actually probably out by now. Um, uh, what's the way to describe it? Basically, this movie was shot in one continuous shot in real time. I think it's like 89 minutes or something like that wrong, long. Yeah, 89 minutes long. That's... Well, most people don't, can put in consideration that that's titles and that's credits included in the movie. And it's one continuous shot all the way through. And they, and it, it literally follows the people involved all the way through the film. And you can tell they did not cut once for this movie. Yeah, I mean, you can really tell that they did. If they did, they're geniuses at editing because it's just amazing. They be, they, had to, they had to actually be a of geniuses how this, oh, because of how this movie was made. Now that part I really do like. Um, and that's in real time, which reminds me a lot of like this, uh, I think it's from 1952. It's one of my favorite movies. Uh, it's called High Noon. Uh, I absolutely love that movie. That's like a western that is in real, done in real time. So that concept really, really got me in, in, interested in watching this movie. So I was like, okay, I'll request it to review for my website. Because it looks something interesting, and I really wouldn't mind watching it. Um, and it says it's based upon a true story, which it could be. Because if you watch a trailer for this movie, you really you will get the, the um, feeling that it's more like a ghost story. You know, like something like um, Paranormal Activity or something of that nature. Not quite like a lost uh, footage type film, but more of a film that's um, just a ghost story, you know. And that's what I was thinking. I was really thinking, oh, this is going to be cool. Uh, you know, I'm not big, big time into like ghost films, like ones that are about like hauntings and everything. There's some good ones out there, like Amityville Horror. Um, I even like this one movie called Skeleton Key, but I love anything that's like Cajun and like stuff dealing with like the bayou and uh, swamps and all that kind of stuff and voodoo. I love those type of movies. <coughs> but that's what I was expecting on this movie. But what you get is a little bit different. Um, basically, it follows this uh, father and daughter. They go to a friend's, uh, like a friend of the father's house to go clean it up. They're supposed to, I think they're supposed to do, uh, like the outside, do like the lawn and landscaping and all that kind of stuff. And then I think they're also supposed to help clean up the inside of the house. Because this guy moved to the city, and he doesn't need this place anymore. A bunch, a bunch of people are going to be getting rid of their place out there. Well, I think it's about 20, no, not even 20 minutes into the movie, like 15 to 20 minutes into the movie. Uh, the girl starts hearing noises, and her father falls asleep. And she's wondering what the hell's going on, and he and he kind of just playing off as oh I didn't hear anything there's nothing going on there's nothing wrong or anything like that. Well, then she gets him to get up and go look and see if there's anything things going on. And then it's about five more minutes go by, and she's wondering where he's at, and she goes to go look for him. She pushes this window open, and he comes falling through it. And he's all bloodied at the mouth, and his wrists are tied up. So you think, what the hell is going on, you know? And then, pretty much from there, he followed this girl through, this, through the house. 
That's all you do. You follow her through the house as she's trying to investigate this. There are some pretty creepy moments throughout it. Um, especially notably this one scene, this one part where she's like looking around on the ground while she got she picked up her keys that she was trying to get. And she's looking around on the ground and next you know it you just see like this uh, arm come out and grab her by the grab her by her neck. And then she gets free but goes flying out of the house. Fly out of the room, then goes flying out of the house, freaking out and everything. So at that point she ends me up with this uh, with I think it was the guy yeah, it was the guy who owns the house. Because he was coming back later at night. He was going to bring them some food. And... Yeah, I can't say much more about it. But it's not a ghost story like I figured it, you know, like it would be. Um, it, I'm really split on if I like this movie or not. Because on one hand, it does have... Um, in ways a creepy atmosphere to it and it's interesting and it was really cool that they did one continuous shot like I said and that they did in real time and all that kind of stuff that was really cool about it but I think in ways I think the, the trailer is a little bit too misleading because the trailer really really does make you think that that's the type of film it's going to be like a haunting film and then it turns out it's not quite like that at all um but it has an interesting ending. It has a twist to it. Uh, at first I was like, when it was just about the ending, I was still freaking out to figure out what the hell is going on. This makes no sense. And then they kind of let you know, not necessarily uh, like right in your face, but not necessarily subtly. They don't let you know. Like that way it's kind of in between because they let you know, but they don't like, forcefully let you know, but then they don't hold back too much. Uh, I don't know. I say if you can get it for like honestly for like five bucks or less, pick it up. Uh, if you can't, I say just I say just skip it because honestly, it's probably gonna be one of those films that you may even just watch one time or twice at the most. Honestly, I don't even know if I'll ever watch this again. I probably will sometime down the line if I can find some else to watch it with. If I can't, I won't. And also another thing though is just do what I did. Wait till it's late at night, it's dark out, then watch it. But anyways, um, that's my review of The Silent House. I will have more reviews up, and also as well as some DVD updates and Blu-ray updates. Alright you guys, take it easy.